Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this. If not, awesome. Uh, so you've probably heard about the first Pokemon Go related lawsuit. Question, you know, is the company liable for essentially the stupidity of the players? <laughs> a gentleman in New Jersey has uh, initiated a class action lawsuit. There you have named Niantic, Nintendo, and the Pokemon Company as the defendants. And at the heart of this is his position that they have created a nuisance with this game, that they are providing incentive for people to trespass. Trespassing, of course, is a concern related to something like this, but he mentions how <laughs> on five occasions kids have a, knocked on his door and asked if they could catch a Pokemon that was appearing in his backyard that they had detected. And so I guess he's getting annoyed with the whole thing, and uh, he's counting on a lot of other people have experienced the same thing. There's information in the filing about uh, other things that have happened, like players going through the Holocaust Museum. Of course, we've been hearing about cemeteries where you know, people just going through the cemetery looking for Pokemon. And so his whole thing is, have they been providing incentive to trespass? And have they unjustly profited from that practice? So it's an interesting question. And they said that Niantic was woefully naive and, and very negligent in terms of things that would happen after the release of this game. In other words, you know, we've heard stories about a person falling off a cliff. Uh, there was a group of teenagers who were out <laughs> hunting Pokemon, and they ended up almost trapped in a mine complex, in an abandoned mine shaft. And, you know, they were lucky enough to get, they found one spot where they could get just enough of a signal on their phone so that they could call for help. And, you know, there was that video with the stampede where everybody was going after the Pokemon. And you even see one guy stop the car and jump out and take off with the engine still running and the door wide open. Definitely some, some interesting behavior. Now, you could say, well, he's just trying to get paid. Or maybe the idea is that you can force the developer to get serious about uh, how this stuff is managed. But here's an interesting question, in my opinion. We're talking about, so let's get into some analysis. We're, the concept of property ownership, uh, once we introduce this idea of augmented reality or virtual property, virtual items, because they talk about Pokestops and gyms. You know, there was the guy who mentioned how he lived in an old church and his house was marked within the game as a gym. So, of course, a bunch of people were pulling up and things like that. And what's interesting is, you know, the developer did not get permission for any of this, and that was pointed out for the class action suit when they filed, that at no point was permission obtained. And so it gets to the question, should you have to do that? How does this work? You know, it's one thing if we're talking about public property, okay. But when you're talking about private property, when I have entities within a game on your property, or when I have your home marked as a key location within the game world itself, legally, what are the ramifications of that? And if I, and if, and if the players of my game, you know, who are following the, the beacons displayed by the app in this augmented reality approach, you know, it, could, it doesn't even have to be Pokemon. It could just as easily be, you know, for example, I could make a, a vampire hunting game, augmented reality, and I could take someone's residence, you know, and have it marked as, you know, Dracula's Castle or a vampire den or something like that. And then if I put a little disclaimer, if I say, now, obey the law, no trespassing, you know, and you're sitting there in a big old, you know, castle icon overlaid on Google Maps or whatever, and the people go out there, it's like, oh, 
Oh, you ready to ready to kill some vampires, guys? Oh. You know, the guy gets up, turns on his porch light, and it's like, ooh, Dracula's moving. I mean, whatever goes down that night, I just sit back, you know, and say, well, listen, oh, wait a minute, that turns out that's private property? Well, hey, I told the players, you know, you don't have to do that. No trespassing. But what's interesting is in court, remember, a woman, after spilling hot coffee on herself, she got paid, uh, in part because of a certain attitude like, hey, well, what do you want from us? It's your problem. So I could see, you know, the potential where a jury would look and say, you know, were you really, were you really that naive as to think that people, especially some of the kids who are going to play this game, uh, have the capacity to handle something like this? Now, I know in some cases what's happened is the players simply don't seem to realize. when They don't realize when they're close enough to actually initiate the capture process. They think they've got to get right up on the thing. And so, of course, that's you know going to lead to situations with trespassing because you don't understand. You don't have to get that close in order to capture it. But I'm sure there are times where you're, you know, moving in the direction, going by the radar, and it does, you know, you realize that to get, close enough to this thing it would mean going on to private property so you know there are you know people have questioned is it is has uh, niantic created an attractive nuisance i mean you know can can you really expect everyone who's playing this game to resist the temptation you know just because you put in a little warning that's uh that's really what's going to be interesting about this so we're just going to have to to see but in terms of property should you be able to include all of these gps locations without getting any type of permission now i would think that if you make it very easy to remove yourself from the world that would be a big step and of course uh they do have a form where you can re request to be removed from the game but it's just it's it is fascinating because you know a normal game traditionally has a self-contained world uh, created by the developers you know if you're talking about Skyrim if you fall off a cliff in Skyrim it shouldn't kill you for real you know um, if you're attacked by wolves in a game normally you know you're not being attacked in real life but with the approach used on this the real world is really acting as the game world essentially what they did was just marked real locations and GPS coordinates for various things and inserted gameplay mechanics so that as you're walking along as you're, go you're driving through town as you're going to the store whatever the game is always alive you know there's always a chance you can encounter a Pokemon or go to a Pokestop or what whatever so normally a game would have its own reality that is completely under the control and is designed by the developers with Pokemon Go and this is where, like, I've heard people say, you know, of course, they had their other game that used augmented reality. And so a lot of these landmarks were originally submitted by users for another game. And so they've basically migrated that and, and populated the Pokemon Go database with their existing locations. Uh, and I've heard people say, well, listen, don't blame them. You know, other people submitted this stuff or... They, they, you know, it would be too much work. I gotta say though, I, I don't, I don't know how that would hold up. I mean, if you put out something, there is a certain expectation that that goes with the act of releasing something like that, especially when you when you've monetized it. And so the idea that, well, gee, I didn't know that that was on private property. I didn't know that we put a gym on top of someone's house or something like that. It was an ambitious project, but there is always a trade-off. So, yes, you decided to make this type of game. You have to understand the risks that go along with that. You're sending people out all over the place in the real world. You're sending people to these beacons. They're going over to these various locations and GPS coordinates. Okay, that is the real world where they're walking. Okay, you are traveling in the real world. Not inside, you know, Azeroth or something like that, or, you know, a lab in Half-Life. You know, some environment created by the developer. They, the developer is using real property to act as the world of Pokemon Go. Some people simply do not have the discipline 
to handle a game like this. Because when you get caught up in a game, and if you don't have the discipline, okay, that was fun, I'm done playing that, I'm going to go do something else. If, if you make it an obsession, it can become dangerous. You know, we've heard about a guy shooting at people because he thought, hey, they're trespassing, they're trying to steal something from me. You know, I mean, you could get attacked by a dog. You say, well, let me, let me hop this fence real quick. I mean, you never know. That's the whole point. I know a lot of people have expressed that it's, it's uh, really brightened their perspective. Uh, getting out, they're walking, there's exercise, there's all of that. But what's, what at the heart of this, what is interesting is should someone be able to use your property in something like this, you know, when, where virtual property and virtual landmarks meet with real property rights? How does this all play out? And are they? And if the and if the players uh, are are not able to control themselves, and if they can't refrain from trespassing in order to get a Pokemon, then what ultimately does that mean for the developer who released the product? When you are directing people all over the real world, when kids, I mean, you know, we've heard about people trying to use this as a way to catch someone off guard and rob them and things like that. I mean, we've heard things like that. So it's a great, you know, experience and a lot of people are having fun with it. But I knew that it would, it would not take that long before property owners who were sick of this or didn't want any part of it would do something like this. And uh, it will be very interesting to see how it's going. I'm curious what people think about this. Again, I know that it's, it's a lot of people are having fun with it. Um, but I can see, I can see both sides, but it really gets down to, you know, in terms of virtual locations, you know, can you just designate my home as some landmark within your game? What are the, what are the, the ramifications of that? And when you do that and you provide that incentive, is it, is it real? is it truly enough to just put a message saying, you know, no trespassing, obey the law. That's going to be very interesting. So uh, I'm curious about what people think of this. Definitely Pokemon Go has changed things. So let's get a clear handle on how these types of experiences are ultimately resolved. You know, because if you start seeing copycats and things like that, I mean, sooner or later, you're going to have to get to these issues. You're going to have to say, okay, you know, I don't know if the guy exactly has been harmed <laughs> per se, but uh, this could definitely have an impact going forward for this type of game. So uh, I will probably do more updates related to this and share some other thoughts um, about Pokemon Go in general. So we'll have to see what happens with this. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.